a great nectar source to have as a, uh, a nectar source in your butterfly garden is this sweet almond. It's a bush, I guess it's a bush. Um, it actually gets really, really big. Uh, this, this one's about, I don't know, eight feet tall. We have to keep cutting it back because it gets huge. Um, they bloom all year long in South Florida. I don't think it's a native down here, but it, they love it. And bees and wasps love it. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a hair streak up there, guys. Let's see if I can show you this hair streak. Hair streaks are tough to video, man. It looks like, you know what? I'm gonna get a ladder and see if I can get this on video for you. All right, now I've got a ladder. I'm coming up, oh, did he fly? Of course he flew. All right. Well, he's flying around. And as he's flying around, let me see if I can maybe show you some of the, oh, there he is. All right, it's a, that is a um, mallow scrub hair streak. It's uh, Strymon Istapa. And it's a, it's a pretty common butterfly here in South Florida, but it's a hair streak and hair streaks absolutely love sweet almond bush. So uh, there's not a whole lot of butterflies on this plant right now. But guys, there's also other, all other kinds of insects are pollinators, including this green bee. Let's see if I can show you a green bee real quick. See a green bee? It's got the green thorax. They're pretty cool. Honey bees absolutely love sweet almond. And I'm not, a, I'm not like a, a beekeeper or anything, but I would imagine that the honey that they would get from this stuff uh, works tremendous is a ni nice tasting honey because this is a very uh, aromatic plant and when this stuff goes into bloom like this you can smell it for hundreds of yards and it attracts all you can see all the insects buzzing around it there's bees there's wasps there's flies all kinds of stuff and of course butterflies and so uh, our, let's see, our hair streak flew, but let's see if I can get, what other insects can I get on here? Honeybees, guys, pollinators. He's doing what he does best right there. And I love this stuff. As long as you keep it, as long as you keep this trimmed, this winds up being a really good plant, um, it, but it gets huge. I mean, it's been this this particular bush has been over 20 feet tall before, and I've had to cut it back probably twice a year. I cut it back, and this time I only got to let it get way overgrown, and I had to like I had to chop it because it was just getting huge. Like, look at the look at the size of this of this little branch here. I'm uh, I'm eight feet from the ground. So um, I love gardening for hair streaks, guys, because hair streaks are one of those things that go unnoticed, but are, especially here in South Florida, we've got some really neat tropical ones that you can find. Um, and all you need to do is put the right plants in your yard. And this is a great nectar source for a lot of different things. And, and it, again, it's not a native to South Florida, but boy, oh boy, is it one that you can put that is a good attractor for things. And so these white flowers, guys, these uh, uh, up from the sweet almond, a lot of times when a plant has very small white flowers like this, and when they're aromatic and they put off the really nice uh, fragrance, a lot of times they are plants that help male butterflies in sperm production. So a lot of times we will get tons of male butterflies coming to these types of flowers and the salts and the alkaline based uh, nectar will help them in sperm production. So that is actually why hair streaks like little tiny white flowers. It's pretty cool.
Also on this white uh, sweet almond. Actually, I've got pollen all over my fingers from touching the flowers. Actually, a lot of it. It's very sticky pollen. And it's all over my fingers. Uh, also on the sweet almond, we also see lots of monarchs. Monarchs love it. We see, uh, what else? Skippers love it. I've seen golf fertilities, zebras, queens, all taking nectar just in my backyard on the sweet almond bush. So it's a good one to have for general pollination. So if you just keep it trimmed, you keep it fertilized, you keep it, you know, you gotta, if you water it, it actually does really well. We don't, we don't do, we don't even have a sprinkler system as you can tell from my grass, but we don't water our plants outside of what nature waters it with rain. And whenever it rains, it pushes out new growth. So if you wanted, if you had a sprinklers or you have a drip system, you keep it wet, um, this will keep pushing out flowers all year long. We actually have, guys, we actually have two um, sweet almond bushes in our property. One on the west side of our house, one over there. That's the one we were just throwing on, on the east side of our house. And it makes a nice bush. It really does. Um, but they grow really long, whippy looking, you know, things and the, the wood is actually very very hard wood it's actually very strong so if you're going to have this in your yard just plan on you know get not letting it get out of control because if, if i let these go they'll just keep growing up 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 they don't really branch out unless you trim them uh so it's actually kind of grows a little bit more like a really strong woody vine um, and so that's that's kind of what we do. If you keep it trimmed back, you keep it watered, it's, it's a phenomenal plant to have. Uh, one of the other things we have found several times on this, on this, actually this bush right here, are the uh, caterpillars for the rustic sphinx. They'll eat the nice new growth and new uh, leaves when they come, when they push new leaves out. And so rustic sphinx caterpillars, big, big green hornworms, uh, I found them several times on this plant. So they use it as a larval host. That's another additional value to having uh, this plant in your yard, in your butterfly garden. All right, guys, new butterfly on the sweet clover. We got a white peacock. How pretty is he? Check it out. It's a perfect example of the, where the male butterflies come to this flower for making sperm cells with salts. Pretty cool. We just had a nice rain and the sweet clover is flushed out all new blooms. And it's really, really fragrant right now, guys. One cool thing about this plant, oh, here's a zebra coming to the party. Zebra, is he gonna land? No. Uh, one cool thing about this plant is that this, when it's blooming, it smells so nice. I mean, you can smell it from all over the place. It smells like, like perfume. Very, very, actually very, very strong. It's a beautiful plant to have in your yard. Uh, grows very easily, very low maintenance. Just gotta cut it back. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video on sweet clover and having this plant in your garden and the benefits of it. And everything from sphinx moths. Like the video guys, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna show you all kinds of different plants and things to use in your garden to attract butterflies, moths, and all kinds of other pollinating insects. All right.